Hi, welcome to Lucy's Bible Study. I was just sitting here thinking before I got started. Um, boy, uh, honestly, putting posting these uh, tapings up and everything is is a more complicated than than what I have to say sometimes. And my husband's sitting behind the camera, and um, and one of our tripods is not working very well, and it doesn't seem to hold up the phone. And, He's fiddling with it, and I'm trying to teach you guys, and my mind is going here and watching him, and and then I he gets up to leave, and I, I look, and the camera falls off the tripod, and, and, and he's like, I just keep going, and then he comes back with a handful of potato chips, and he's eating those, which is what I'm sure y'all heard over the camera, and I'm thinking, you know, God, if, if people can get past this, um, they're really hungry. They really, really want to hear what we have to say. But I'll tell you what, um, I just for FYI, this is not always easy. Uh, we are going to become more professional, I sure, as time goes on. Um, I want to talk to you about fear. Fear is, is such a major component of the world today. I mean, it is like the big, big word. And... Um, and it's used so much in people's mouths. You know, I'm not, I am not the mouth police. I used to be when I first got out of Rhema and I got a real realization uh, about how powerful your words were. Um, I found myself correcting people around me all the time. And then I started having other ministers start correcting and stepping on me. And I thought, well, you know, I, I don't like that. And then God said, well, good, because that's what you've been doing to other people. So we need to, we're not called to be the mouth police. All I'm called to do is to give you the information and what you do with the information, that's up to you. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to talk about is fear. Uh, recently, I had a situation that came up with a, uh, a family that had everything that could go wrong, seemed like it went wrong. And when there was one thing that came out of the situation, and that was um, that the, the the person that it was happening to said, the thing I feared, I feared that this was going to happen one day. Now she said this maybe a year, two years before it ever took place. But the minute I was told that this is what she had said, that she feared that this was going to happen one day. God immediately, uh, honestly, took me over to Job. Now, I've never been a big Job reader. Um, uh, I think it's just such a downer in some ways. But God, he turned that around and he said, no, you need to study Job because there's a lot of good teaching that comes out of Job. That, And I thought, okay, here we go. I know Job. And what I learned in the third chapter of Job was Job said, because, you know, we look at Job and we think, well, they lived such a good life. He was such a righteous man. He didn't do anything wrong. And then God just turned him over to Satan. But there's a clue here because in the third chapter, it says that Job had a problem with his children. And he knew they were doing wrong. And rather than correct the children and deal with their bad behavior, he just went back behind them and tried to clean up their mess. And for him, some reason, it was easier to offer sacrifices to God and try to go behind and clean up their mess than it was to deal with their bad behavior. And he made a statement. He said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. And I think the capital word here in Job is fear. Fear opens the door for Satan to get his foot in your life. And we just do not realize how important our words are. There is life and death in what you say. You have been given the power to speak life into a situation or you can speak death over that situation. And we r run off words all the time and we don't think anything about it. How many of you have ever said, um, be careful, uh, take care. That's the one I like, take care. And I thought, no, I don't want to 
want to take care, I want to take Jesus. Now, that sounds silly, but it's true because that's what we say. And then another one is, well, the flu season is uh, about to start on September the 10th. The flu season is going to start. And, and we'll go, oh, my goodness, I hope I don't get sick. Your words can bring about situations in your life that you are not even aware of. And I want to read to you words that work wonders. Fear opens the door because fear is the opposite of love. And the love giver is God. And so when you operate in fear... You know what that tells me? You don't really know the love giver. Because the more time you spend in the presence of God and you read his word, which is who he is, Jesus says, if you want to know the Father, then read what I have to say and everything that I do because I am the impressed image of God. I have come into this world to show you who he is. Because the only concept they had in the past was a God that they feared. That's not the father he wants us to be. Fear in the Old Testament is also a reverence. And we could take that word and we can use it as a reverence for God. But you know, you don't really have a reverence for somebody that you don't honor and you don't know much about. So he wants us to get to know him and to get to know him and to get to know his love for us tells me that I don't have anything to fear. That if I am walking in his principles, if I am walking in the confines of the covenant that he's laid down for me, if I am receiving his word and abiding in his word, that doesn't mean I come in and out daily. It means that I set up homestead in his word. I put up a tent. This is where I am. I stake my stakes. This is my territory in the word of God. That's where I live. And if I understand that, I can understand that God's, God's got a solution. That doesn't mean that problems aren't going to come. Because problems are going to come. But how you handle the problem and the attitude you have toward the problem is the make or break in the situation. And your words are very, very important because, you know, once you squeeze that, the toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube, you can't put the toothpaste back in. And the squeezing often comes out when we're under pressure. You know, a lot of people put up a big show and they're so good and they're so righteous and they're so this and so that. But man, if you squeeze them hard enough, you will see what they're really made out of. And, and the pressure of the world brings out either the best in us or the worst in us. I want to give you some how can I say. These are some how can I truths. If you talk sickness when the Bible says with his stripes we are healed. You talk weakness when the Bible says the Lord is the strength of my life. Psalms 27.1 You talk defeat when the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ. Romans 8.37 You talk lack when the Bible says my God shall supply all your needs. Through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. You talk bondage when the Bible says that the Son has made me free. And who is free? It's free indeed. John 8.36. With our mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We can either make our confession into salvation, which is all-inclusive word, says that. It means healing, prosperity, well-being, deliverance. All the things that you need is, 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 is all put into that one Greek word. You see, we just take that word as meaning we got a free, free out of jail card and we're just going to hang on until we get to heaven. 
That's not what salvation means. Salvation is all inclusive. Salvation is everything that took place on the cross. And if you don't know what took place on the cross, how can you walk in it? How can you walk in the deliverance God has got for you? So what are you going to do? You're going to talk defeat? You're going to talk the old birth and not the new birth? You're going to walk in the old life and not the new life? See, the old life say, woe is me. If I didn't have bad things, I wouldn't have anything at all. Woe is me. I'm just a poor and down out sinner. Woe is me. I'll never overcome this bondage and this addiction to alcohol or drugs. Or woe is me. I'll never be able to overcome this cancer or this sickness that has plagued me for years and years and years. I'm just going to hang in here until God either takes me or the rapture happens. And that is not the life God has prepared for you. Because Jesus says, the kingdom has come. Don't wait till you get to heaven to walk in the kingdom. The kingdom is now. The kingdom started in your life the minute you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are a kingdom child. You are an ambassador for Christ Jesus. And I can tell you, our ambassadors that live in foreign countries, they don't live poor. <laughs> they don't live defeated. Man, they have a chauffeur. They have privileges and rights. And they, they listen, when people in the country get in trouble, they run to the ambassador. They take refuge in the compounds uh, that our country has set up in those nations. And here we are, ambassadors for Christ. How many people have run to your house to take refuge? How many people have come to you and say, man, I got a problem. Can you help me? You know why? Most of the time, you're just right there in the middle of the problem with them. When two of you are in the hole, who's going to get you out? God wants you to be out of the hole so you can throw the rope down to get somebody else out of the hole. God wants you to be the answer, not the problem. You're to be the solution. You're to be, your, your language, your conversation should be filled with salt. What does that mean? Oh, I love salt. Drives my husband nuts. You give me a watermelon, honey, and I'm going to salt it. I told somebody the other day, I said, when you bake something, cook something, be sure and you, you put some salt in there. And they go, salt? Why? I said, because salt enhances the flavor of everything you eat. Did you know that? It's a flavor enhancer. And so we need to be flavor enhancers in, our, in the language we speak. And we, and we salt our words by having the right answer at the right time. You know, somebody if somebody says to me um, on the spur of the moment, Louise, how, I, I remember I was having lunch one day with a lady. I just love her so much. She is awesome. But she didn't know it at the time that she was seeking the Lord. But she was. And uh, she, she, she got really caught up in end times. And we're sitting there. And suddenly uh, she asked me, about end times and and man it just started rolling out of me and i was talking about the rapture and i was talking about all the things and how timothy and thessalonians had predicted what was taking place in the world today and blah 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 and you know from that conversation she she became so um thrilled to hear an explanation that the next thing she wanted to come to the Bible study. And from the Bible study, she received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. But let me ask you something. What if I had not been able to give her an answer for the question? What if I'd sat there like a dummy and said, well, I love the Lord, but I have no clue what you're talking about. Hello? <laughs> Are you serious? You know, we need to, we need to be ready at any time to give an answer for our faith. Why? What is, what is, what is your success? You know, when, we, when our house burned down, um, days later, 
Larry and I were sitting in a restaurant and we were eating and laughing and smiling at one another and this couple came over and they were just going on and on about, oh, I'm so sorry and blah, blah, blah. And we went, oh, we're okay, we're cool. And they asked me later, how could, how could that be your attitude? How could you do that? How could you do that? And I said, because it's just things. Because we walk in amazing grace. That God's going to restore to us anything that Satan takes from us seven times over. And I want to tell you, I'm, I love my little house that God has given me back. And I like it better than the one that burned down. Because that's my God. You can't ever outdo him. Boy, I tell you what, people, get a hold of your words. Don't let the word fear dominate your vocabulary. I'm afraid to go to the mall at night. Why? I'm not. I'm surrounded by angels. I love it. One of the prophets told his other uh, cohort, I can't remember, I'd like to bring it up to you here. I'm talking about the Bible. But he said, oh, the, the enemy, they're so big, they're so strong, there's so many. And he said, God, open his eyes that he can see. And he did, and he saw the army of God standing there, defeat, ready to take on all of this uh, army that was in the natural. You see, we have an army that's surrounding us. We have angels that surround us. My son is a pilot. And you know, I just thank God every day that his angels are out there taking care of him. I'm, I'm no more concerned about what's, or anything that's going to happen because his angels are there. He's got to be taken care of. And we need to walk in, in, in joy and, and in, in, in all the fulfillment that God has for each one of us. But when you speak fear, when you speak words of doubt and unbelief, when you give credence and credence to the things that Satan is trying to do, you will, that's exactly what you're going to get. And so I would encourage you to think about your conversation and turn your words around to line up with what God says about you. You're not a loser. You're a, you're a success. God has made a plan for you. He's got a plan for you. You just need to find out what that plan is and begin to walk in it. And you will be successful. And you know, your plan may be that um, you may be the best garbage man or woman in this town, but you will be great at what you do. And everybody will know it because they'll see the smile on your face and the joy in your heart. Let your life reflect the power of God and watch what you say. Because words are powerful, and we can speak life or death. I can speak healing or sickness. I can speak poverty, or I can speak prosperity. But I need to know what God has to say about me in order to do any of that. And so I go back and encourage every one of you to get into God's Word. And let me tell you, if, you, if you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, Study the Gospels. If you have received him, study the epistles because they're written for the church today. How we need to live a holy life, a sanctified life, and a godly life in a very dark world. But you know what? You can live in the eye of the storm and be the light on a hill. And I would encourage every single one of you to do that. And I thank you for joining me in this Bible study today. Love every one of you. Bye-bye.